And thank you all, not only for being here, but for the wonderful words I got to listen to once I got here. Uh, Denny's is not the fastest service in the world by any means, but uh, they outdid themselves this evening in slowness. <laughs> what, what can I say? Um, yeah, I'm pretty much a regular here, but I missed the, the March and April gatherings before we went on hiatus. Uh, so it's been seven months since I've been here. You know, seven months since I've seen several of you anyway. Some of you I've seen in Aurora and so on in between. Uh, but since I last saw you, uh, we did the uh, National Poetry Month. What's become sort of a tradition for me now is the uh, 30 Poems in 30 Days uh, as a fundraiser for St. Baldrick's in their fight against children's cancer. Uh, that's, in this case, Poems Against Cancer 2016, the third year I've done that, and I think I'll probably keep on doing it for a while. Uh, this year, it was a month for ekphrastic poems, uh, and I just probably spent more time looking at artwork on the, on the computer and on my phone than I did actually writing in the course of the month, trying to find things that just really you know, said something to me, good, bad, or otherwise. Uh, the first of these is called The Lady Far Wiser, and it's after Marcel Karam's Adama, or literally speaking, The Lady although it also translates into to the lady or because of the lady. They bring her drinks, blood red wine with taste opened in gently swirled stemware, blackberry brandy and hand warmed snifters to be cradled in the palm like a breast. They bring her words of desire, hot like the flames that light cigarettes, clasped between sweet wine red lips, she tells them they just want her body. They bring her roses, stems stretching far taller than any truth in a suitor's words. My head could shrink to nothing, she says. You just want to dance with my nipples between your teeth. They bring her yet more offerings, gifts as fine as any guesses at what she wants, and lay them on the table of her heart only to discover she always leaves them behind. Um, the, the Works Progress administ or Projects Administration of the 1930s of the Great Depression is, uh, is an incredible sense of, or source rather, of art. Uh, along with the, providing the title photograph that prompted my chapbook, Hitchhikers in Mississippi, 1936, uh, I came across John W. Beauchamp's etching of the Midway in 1935. And the only thing you see of the character in this poem in his, his artwork is a little sign by an empty stage that says, The Wonder Girl, 10 cents. Fifi sits on a three-legged stool that rests on loose floorboards. The stage is blocked from the midway by canvas curtains. The color of a military encampment from one of those motion pictures she's heard of but never seen. With, or so she's told, the tall fat man and the tall skinny man who stumble into trouble all the time and up, end up running off into the sunset to escape. The running away part sounds to Fifi like a very good idea. She looks at her bare feet with their bare toes and chipped nails as they seem to dance in the flickering lantern light surrounding her. She looks at the scab on her left knee from when she fell in the gravel of a railroad siding playing tag with Tommy the strong man and his son a couple towns ago. Her bare feet and short thin legs want to take her dancing with Tommy, dancing in the moonlight after the carnival has closed and the midway is silent except for the music of their hearts. Fifi the Wonder Girl looks barely twelve and her voice doesn't betray her as she sings all the verses of God Bless America that the audience can never remember, or declaims the Declaration of Independence or a Whitman poem. Waiting for the curtains to part, thinking of Tommy's fingers, she tugs at the cloth that binds her woman's breasts flat. She longs for a hand mirror to show her the beauty her lover tells her is real. 
uh, June. Thank you. June, I decided to punish myself and do another 30 poems in 30 days, which is, oh, we're not, we're not done with the time yet, you know. Uh, yeah, this was for uh, what's called Lexington Poetry Month. Uh, the city of Lexington, Kentucky uh, sets aside the entire month of June, and one of their presses organizes this 30 poems in 30 days thing. And... Uh, Instead of being acrastic in, in June, I went with uh, prose poetry, which I've dabbled in some, but not extensively before this. So I wrote 30 prose poems in 30 days and never want to write another one. <laughs> Lilith. There is lightning in the high clouds to the north, but distance cancels the thunder. The flashes reach me, but the cycle is incomplete. The sky turns darker eclipsing the healing moon and stars. I am the first emigre, the first immigrant woman. I leave as a stranger, I arrive the same. With no husband, no sons, the cycle is incomplete. The clouds roll closer, the air cools and turns electric. My daughters and I speak our only language and are damned. We eat the only food we know, and we are cursed. We would belong, but the cycle is incomplete. The distance closes. Thunder makes the children turn in their sleep. My labor is required, but undervalued. My wisdom is needed, but not sought. Our bodies are just desired, then discarded. And again, the cycle is incomplete. Silence drops, is suddenly carried away by a thousand fingers drumming. The rain falls, warm and soft, carrying hope and salvation, but the ground is hard. The promise is rejected, flows in the gutters, and the cycle is incomplete. My Fred to your ginger. Uh, I suspect everybody in the room is probably old enough to know who Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers were, even if you don't remember them well. I'll have to Google them. Yeah, you'll have to Google them, kid. You do that. <laughs> Damn youngsters. One, a black ribbon held back your russet hair. You wore a pale denim blouse with navy blue buttons. My fingers ached to undo. A flowered peasant skirt that floated in your passing and tan flats over otherwise bare feet. I have no idea what I was wearing. Two, and oh how we danced that evening under the silver lights of the parking lot that was too hard for the softness of our growing love. And in the yellow light of the hotel room that was too soft as we strolled and cha cha and rocked and two-stepped and through the not-so-darkness of our bed that was at last just right. Three, each step and offering in a different dance as we followed the other while leading the way. Four, and in the morning, I hope we'll dance across the dawn. For now, you sleep in my arms, your breath teasing my neck while the heat of you presses where your leg crosses mine. So we go on to July, right after the 30-30 for June, and uh, one of my editors uh, at Zoetic Press in San Francisco said, uh, hey, we're going to do a 31 for 31. And I said, sure, why not? <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, the, the poems aren't generally specifically acrastic, but uh, they were triggered by things that I found on Pinterest. That, that was sort of my guide for the daily inspirations. And yeah, I do sometimes cheat and write four or five poems in one day and then goof off for a couple of days, but you know. The sum total is that over a course of three months I wrote 91, some very good, some, eh, who knows, poems. Drawing maps in the night. Afterward, at the old kitchen table with its wood scratched by her sons playing on endless rainy evenings, 
They looked at each other in hushed tones across unfrosted chocolate cake, placed square on plain white plates, tried to figure out if they were in love, tried to decide if it made a difference as long as they were caring and kind, and agreed that they would sleep on it. It's all fun and games. Where have we heard that before, right? Until the asteroid strikes, the earthquake hits, the dirty bomb gets delivered, the lone gunman is not alone, is not somewhere that you're not, is not driven just by race, religion, gender, or choice of favorite team. Until the power goes out, the water doesn't flow, the sun doesn't rise, doesn't set permanently, forever, period. And reality, in some form, comes crashing in, while you're just a bit too far from home to close that backyard bunker door behind you. <laughs> One of the things I came across on Pinterest was a photograph uh, shot in London in 1943 of a, uh, a young British woman dancing with a young American flyer. Uh, very common at the time. I mean, the, 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 the dance halls in London were where everybody went to get away from the war, even though the war was raining down on their heads most nights. Old woman with photograph. My husband was fighting in Italy. I have a photograph, him marching, taken on the road from the beach. I hadn't seen him for six months and didn't see him for another seven. You were in London on a weekend pass. I have a photograph. Us dancing, taken while my friends and I stepped out. I'd never seen you before that dance, and I never saw you after it. I know the rest of my husband's story. I have boxes of photographs us laughing, holidays with the children, their weddings. He passed a week before turning 80, and my love for him is still as strong as ever. But of you, my handsome young Yankee pilot, I only have that photograph, us laughing. A corner of my faithful heart is still yours, no danger to my husband or our children. And I think I'd rather that we're all I know. So, thank you. so aside from uh, being busy scribbling, uh, I put out a second, uh, in this case, a micro chat book last month uh, based on stories that a friend of mine told uh, about her and her husband, uh, who several years after her passing is still probably the only thing on her mind most of the day. Uh, the book's called The Bear Whispers in the Night. I've got copies for two bucks if anybody's interested. I've also got copies of some of my other chapbooks and my collection of, of short stories, all five or six stories that are in the book. But anyway, we can talk about those later. Uh, a small package of great value. And one day, somewhere in the summer, when the seeds had turned to blooms, had turned to harvest, she sent him two tomatoes, the purpled red of well and truly kissed lips. Some translucent white onions, swollen baby's fists at the base of long, sweet stems. A handful of small potatoes shining golden yellow through the earth that still swaddled them. There was no reason to. He had his own garden well tended beneath another equally beneficent sky. No reason, but her heart insisted there was a need. And the current project, as uh, Jen and Frank know, uh, is just about ready to go to the editors for whatever damage they want to do to it before it's published. Uh, it's called Jasmine, and it's, it's a collection of 30 uh, prose poems. Uh, written over the last four or five years, I guess, in total. Uh, I've probably got 50 or 60 prose poems, and these are the ones that I thought fit together. Uh, and a couple of the others are going to be used, and a couple of the others will probably 
hopefully disappear. Uh, first one is overhanging trees. This was among my dreams during the night. After the dogs got me up, after I finally summoned sleep from the dust under the bed, we walked out of the building, not holding hands yet, got separated by some folks coming up the walk. I saw you turn toward the playground. You were out of sight by the time I followed. The parkway was rich with trees that shuttered the afternoon light. Thick privets were interrupted by river quarried rock walls and fading gray driveways. I knew where I'd find you, which swing your legs would push higher and higher as you laughed. Instead, you stepped from a wall and spun me around and pushed me back to the stones while your body pressed against me and your mouth opened over mine with a heart full of hunger and our hands were tree limbs moving everywhere in the gale that sprang from us. We moved apart, held hands, headed toward the swings to pretend we were children. I'm glad the dogs didn't wake me again until morning. Okay, I'm gonna gonna stop after one more piece. Uh, this was written for National Poetry Month back in January 2013, when my Ohio editor decided he was going to put together a compilation of National Poetry Month poems and see if anybody would actually write 30 of them. And I think there were about a half a dozen of us who actually made it through the entire 30 days. But uh, he would issue a prompt at midnight Cleveland time which means I got it at 11 o'clock. I got to jump on the people on the East Coast. Uh, but he would cut it off at the next day, the poetry submissions at midnight, your time. So I had the whole you know, 25 hours to play with. One of the prompts was jazz, uh, and uh, thus jazz me. Start me deep with jungle rhythms, add sugar cane, and soils containing languages we'll learn to soon discard. Give me baptism by fires in the darkest of the night, and then escape with me. While our others wallow, while our others follow missionary tracts and black moats noted on white sheets, we will fix on fusion. We will find the star stuff in each free improvisation. I will riff your body with my fingers, bring forth emanations with my lips, while you pluck counter notes and melodies to see us off this stage beyond percussive endings deep in God. Thank you all. <laughs>